Today, dancers move in a world with forms and dynamics as various as the sources that inspire them. In this world, choreographers create works in the language of dance particular to their time. The work begins in the studio, where the choreographer and dancers come together. In contemporary dance, the schooling of a dancer develops directly from the choreographer's need for dancers in whose company they can create and explore. At the Burno Dance Conservatory in the Czech Republic, students prepare to perform a dance created by American guest teacher and choreographer Phyllis Gutelius. Gutelius bases her work with the dancers on principles developed by Martha Graham, with whom she first trained and then performed. Her direction in the rehearsals is to move the students towards a new perspective. Step by step, she introduces the dancers to a dance language originated by Graham generations ago. They learn to focus on the torso as the center of movement and discover that the shape of movement is dictated by the dynamic relationship of the body to space, gravity, and time. As they learn the dance, the students are also learning how to dance. In the role of choreographer, Gutelius molds her dance in work that develops an idea into physical movement. As a teacher, she will mold her dancers in class exercises that anticipate the demands of the choreography. New movements that she introduces in the rehearsal studio will be based on technique developed in the classroom, where the students build a technical foundation that prepares them for rehearsal and for future experiences with contemporary vocabulary. This work centers on the development of the dancer's body. The ultimate goal is an instrument with a physical, dynamic and expressive range that meets the challenge of the dance maker's kinetic imagination. This program presents a course of training that adapts Graham-based precepts to the needs of professional classical dance students. It was Graham's viewpoint that the basic training of dancers should parallel the first steps of our beginnings. Figuratively, in dance terms, the beginner is like an infant. To develop the backbone of her instrument, she begins on the floor. She first learns how to sit, to kneel and crawl, until she stands, prepared to take her first step. In keeping with this approach, tape one is devoted to floor exercises. A step-by-step -step structure in three lessons allows the dancers' bodies to develop in stages. A new discipline is not imposed on an immature body. Rather, a trained instrument evolves, performing simple but demanding movements in a process based on the structure of the body. Group one illustrates the introductory level. To sit on the floor with a straight spine, a dancer needs strength and flexibility. A focal point in exercises for beginners is to develop strength in the abdominal and lower back muscles. These muscles provide the continual lift that floor work requires. Flexibility in the hips is built on that support. Balance develops on the basis of coordination of the torso with the arms, legs and head. When dancers move, they balance against the pull of gravity by correctly placing the upper torso and head over the lower torso. Alignment begins in the lower torso at the base of the spine. The lift of tensed buttocks, hips and stomach stretches upwards through the core of the body to the base of the throat. A vertical line between the base of the spine and the base of the throat centers the erect torso. The same points form the guideline for contractions that curve the torso. The lowest point of the curve begins at the sacrum. Internally, the stomach muscles contract in, up and back towards the spine, while the ribs and chest hollow to maximize the depth of the curve in its upward movement to the base of the throat. Externally, the back curves upward from the sacrum to the topmost vertebra of the neck. The head either completes the line of the spine or it moves independently. To place movement that spirals, 
The dancers imagine a shaft as their center, with axis points at the base of the throat and the base of the spine. The external line of the spiral begins in the lower torso at the sitting bone of the pivoting hip and circles upward to the opposite shoulder in the upper torso. The dancer relates to the same internal line that centered the erect or curved torso and use the opposition between the hip and shoulder and the center line as a cross-reference to keep the upper and lower torsos in alignment. The turn of the head is the final factor. The spiral that begins in the pelvis ends when the head completes the rotation. In centered movements, beginners are taught to move the head as an extension of the spine. The effect of the direction of the gaze is taken into account. With the back straight, the eyes look straight forward, where the head and neck complete the line of the straight spine. In the curve, the eyes may turn inward without dropping. If the gaze drops, it may cause the chin to drop and break the continuation of the line of the head and neck as part of the spine. Group 2 have advanced to the elementary level. Their increased strength supports movement that is more dynamic and spatial. They explore the power of breath to energize the body, to propel the dancer in space and to vary the dynamic qualities of their movement. The basic guidelines for placement, which determine that the hips control the upper torso, are practiced now as the basis for off-center movement. In spiral, the strength and weight of the pelvis controls the movement of the upper torso and head and supports off-center balances. Group 3 represents advancement to the intermediate level. The exercises for this group develop range of movement and strength to higher levels of articulation. Physical stress in complex phrases is balanced by higher levels of coordination, placement and strength. The dancers developing awareness of movement quality, musical accent and dynamic contrasts become as essential to performance as physical accuracy. The floor work for the three groups follows a set structure in six parts. In part one, the focus is on the core of the body. The torso develops strength and flexibility in movement from parallel to rotation, from curve to straight, center to off-center. The stretch to second position develops the hips and spine to support rotation with maximum extension. Part two, the breathing exercises. These are performed with crossed feet. The first exercises energize the torso and initiate leg and arm extensions. Part three, breathing exercises that develop the torso in spiral. The most advanced group combine the elements of breath and spiral in exercises that extend the legs and arms from center and off center. In part four, the dancers use their weight and use the floor to move the torso dynamically against the pull of gravity. In spiral, contraction or release, they use constant pressure down against the floor to lift up from the floor. From movement to movement, the dancer stretches up from the stomach, back and hips to sustain the lift. This diminishes the resistance of gravity and she is free to move in space and to stretch the hips and legs to maximum extension. Part 5, the figure 8 exercises develop turns that spiral. Groups 1 and 2 work from the basic positions with crossed legs, with the soles of the feet together and parallel. Exercises for group 2 spiral from parallel to the sit on one hip and to the open fourth position. The percussive dynamic is introduced in fourth position for turns that corkscrew around center. Group two and group three perform figure eight exercises that release and contract centered around a lifted knee in parallel position. Group three perform figure eight exercises that require full strength and maximum flexibility in second with one knee inverted in the open fourth 
and in fourth with the foot in the walk position. Part 6. The final group of exercises yield to the pull of gravity to move down to the floor or resist the pull of gravity to move up from the floor. Group 2. Practice a fall from a sitting position down to the floor. The more complex the rise or fall, the greater is the demand for strength in the stomach and hips. The rise from two knees up to a kneel on one knee anticipates the relationship of floor work to standing work as does the rise from the kneeling position up to a standing position. Group 3 begins a fall that registers each transition from fourth standing to fourth kneeling in the first phrase. Phrase 2 deepens a contraction to move from fourth kneeling to the sit in fourth and from the sit down to the fall. Each transition is practiced slowly and clearly to develop the technique that makes it possible and safe to practice fall or rise on a single pulse in a rehearsal. A formal rise from the floor serves as a transition for the body from floor work to standing. The dancers stretch the Achilles tendon and hamstrings as they rise. They are making the transition which ends exercises for the floor and begins the standing work at the centre. The floor work for the three groups follows a set structure in six parts. Not all exercises shown for any group should be given in one lesson. Eight exercises per floor work would be the guideline for not more than 30 minutes or one third of the lesson time.